Hello again and welcome to Snipply. In our previous videos, we talked about how you can add your own call to action to every link you share. We've covered how you can customize the call to action so you can use your own brand colors and your own button colors. And we also talked about integrations on how you can use Snipply within Buffer, Hootsuite, Twitter, and Snip links from across the web. But at the end of the day, as a marketer, what you care about is return on investment measurable reports so that you can show your clients or boss or even for yourself what is your ROI on social media on, and on the links that you share and then on the content that you curate. And so today I want to dive much deeper into Snipply Analytics and the insights you can derive from them. So without further ado, let's dive straight into the Snipply dashboard. Uh, the Snipply dashboard is where you'll get all sorts of information and insights as to how your links are performing. And so the one I've picked out to show you here is our social media feeds call to action uh, and you can rename your call to action quite easily with the pencil icon on top of every call to action. I've called the social media feeds because it's the call to action that's hooked up to our Twitter. And so let me just give you a brief look of what our Twitter looks like. Our Twitter stream shares a lot of great marketing related content and they're all Snipply links. I've added call to actions with Snipply's branding to all of the links that we share on Twitter. So let's just pick one out as an example here, how Product Hunt grew to 140,000 fans uh, when our followers click on that, they'll be able to read through the contents from Buffer, but they'll also see a little call to action here in the bottom corner from us to our followers. And of course, when they click on the call to action, they will reach our landing page or whatever we're promoting at the time. And so let's take a look at the analytics. What I care about as a marketer and what you should care about is how are my links performing? Traditionally, you have all sorts of information like how many people are clicking on the links that you share. But it doesn't really mean anything when you have 100,000 people clicking on a BuzzFeed link that you share that's super viral because what does it mean when you're driving traffic to somebody else's blog? And with Snipply, it's all about adding that call to action and see how many people are engaging and converting, how many people are coming back to your landing page or signing up for your newsletter. And that's what Snipply is going to tell you. By adding that call to action, we have all sorts of interesting insights. The first thing you'll notice is on the top corner, there's time segmentation. By default, it's set to uh, rolling past 30 days. Right now, it's April 16th to May 16th. But of course, if you're looking for specific information, you can use the time filter to see specific time frames uh, in order to generate reports that way. Um, next thing you'll see is within the past 30 days, I've created 103 Snipply links. Uh, uh, they've been clicked on, so people have viewed the link, clicked on the link, read the link 1,944 times, um, and I've gotten 38 conversions, which means that 1.95% uh, of the time people come, click on my links, and they actually engage with my call to action. And we've seen that the average conversion rate usually falls anywhere between 1% to 5%. Um, and so we were quite sitting there on the average there and different companies will see different conversion rates depending on your call to action. So for example, if you're giving away a free ebook or you know, you're introducing a time limited discount in your call to action, you're going to see a jump in conversion rates where if you use a bit more passive language like learn more about us, visit our website, then you're going to expect a slightly lower conversion rate. So it's all about the marketing message and the marketing campaign that you're promoting. Verified conversions refer to, uh, this is a, a conversion pixel you can actually add on your website to track how many people go through the entire funnel. So you'll see here, uh, 1,944 people clicked on my links, 38 people clicked on my call to action, and 12 people signed up for Snipply. And that's where we, um, we put our conversion pixel is on the sign up page. Now, depending on what your conversion goal is, that verified conversion could mean different things. For us, uh, the verified conversion is sign up and we're promoting to people who follow Snipply. And so if you're doing something different, for example, if you're uh, running an e-commerce site, you may want to put the conversion pixel on a thank you page, on a post purchase page, in which case uh, this block here would tell you how many snips you created, how many people clicked on your links, how many people clicked on your call to action, and then the verified conversion would report how many people actually made a purchase. So that's really powerful stuff. And the next thing we want to look at is this block down here. Very interesting insights. Again, that's not available anywhere else outside of Snipply. Average pages per visit will tell me how many pages that a visitor would, uh, would browse through during a single session. Average pages per visit. So for example, if they click on your link and then they, they visit three pages during that session, the number would be three. Um, average time on site tells me how long people are spend reading the article. So um, this one here is 5.56. That means on average, a visitor is gonna spend almost six minutes 
reading the blog posts that I'm sharing. Um, average time on first page just refers to how long they're spending on the initial page before they visit a different page within the same session. And the bounce rate uh, is calculated based on how many people leave within the first 10 seconds. And so these are all you know, relatively normal stats that you find on Google Analytics. But again, these stats are usually exclusively available on your own website, which means when I'm sharing something like a buffer blog post, I normally don't get any of this stuff. I don't know how my audience is responding to the content that I share. But because I've snipped those links, I now get an on-page insights as to how my audience is responding to the links that I'm sharing. And this is great news. So uh, I'm seeing that with the content I'm sharing, people on average are spending almost six minutes on it, which tells me that uh, the visitors are relatively engaged. They appreciate the content and they're actually taking time to read it. And so one um, a really interesting insight you'll see is if you share all these viral content and you think you're doing really well because you're getting a lot of clicks, but you might start using Snippy and see that the average time on site is less than 10 seconds or bounce rates are really high, which means that they may be super clickbaity content. And although people are clicking on the links, they're leaving right away, which is a sign that you're not sharing the right type of content. So this information here will give you an insight into the quality of the content you're sharing and how your audience is responding to the things you're sharing. Um, the, the higher these numbers, the better, except for the bounce rates, of course. The more time they spend on the site is a great signal that people are actually enjoying the content. They're spending time and they're digesting it. And of course, with the Snipply Call to Action, the more time they spend on the page means that the more impression or exposure you're gonna get for your call to action and your branding. Uh, and then the next block is traffic source. This is gonna tell me where people are coming from. And of course, you've got the major traffic sources like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and et cetera. And you'll see that uh, we're very heavy users of Twitter, less so on Facebook, and of course, even less so on LinkedIn. But you'll also see that there's some differentiation with M uh, m.facebook which refers to the mobile version uh, and that's going to tell you a bit more information into where people are coming from whether they're on mobile or they're on desktop and etc uh, we've also got some graphs down here on the side so you'll see different uh, peaks and valley and you can evaluate your content performance that way it seems like on monday uh, we've had a spike on wednesday tuesday tuesday so it seems like Early in the week, people are really actively clicking on our links, and the valleys you see are usually Saturday, Sunday. So it seems like on the weekends, people aren't really visiting uh, the content that we're sharing on Twitter. But more importantly, what I want to look at is conversions. How are people uh, converting through the content? Because that's what's most important to me as a content curator. It's, it's great that I'm driving tons of traffic to the Buffer blog, for example, but I also want to know how many people are engaging with my call to action and coming back to my landing page. So it seems like we have very similar spikes. You know, Monday, Tuesday, that's when we get a lot of our conversions. So maybe I want to save the best content for those times. Uh, and then conversion rate is the ratio between the clicks and conversions, of course. Um, it seems like on this particular Sunday, we had 12% conversion rate. So that's quite good. I might want to segment the time, as you saw earlier, with the time segmentation to find out more about what happened that Sunday. What did I share on Sunday? Uh, and how can I do more of that? And that's really what the analytics is all about. Learning about what you're doing well and not doing well through your content curation efforts and then optimizing your strategy accordingly. And of course, um, in the dashboard, not only do you have all the analytics, you also have the different call to actions. And so you'll see on the left-hand side here, uh, I'm doing some A-B testing to see which call to actions are performing better. And if you hover over your variations, it'll actually show you um, uh, the preview of what it looks like. This one here is promoting Snipply for Enterprise. I've got a different uh, A-B variation that's testing tips and strategy, uh, case studies, and so forth. So it seems like our best performing call to action of this one here, find the balance between content creation and curation, see the infographing, and this is converting at a 5.6% conversion rate, whereas you've got some 0% here. Um, you know, tips and tricks, strategies to boost snipply conversion rates. It seems like maybe it's too generic. Maybe people aren't responding well to it. So I might have to cut that back from my AB variation and start using more of this one. Uh, this one here, find the balance between content creation and curation, infographic, and with a 5.6 conversion rate, uh, it seems like it's doing well. And so over time, I'm going to be testing different conversions, or different call to actions, different marketing messages, and then optimizing my message accordingly. And so under that, you'll see a list of all the Snipply links that are associated with this call to action. So as you saw earlier, how Product Hunt grew to 140K fans, 
That's the buffer blog that we saw on our Twitter channel, and that Snipply link is showing up here. If I find a link that's doing really well, I could actually use this little icon, the two paper icon, to copy it, and that's going to allow me to paste it into Twitter or Facebook or schedule it using Buffer and share that link again. Uh, each of these are also sortable, so I can sort it by conversions, for example, to see my most popular link. And it seems like the 50 things I'm no good at with social media is a link that's done really well. And so I'm going to take a look, copy that, open a new tab. And I'll be able to visit that link and see what that was all about. And it seems like this blog post generated the most conversions. So maybe I want to share that again. So that's what the, the sorting is all about, to see what links are most popular. Of course, conversion is going to tell me how many people clicked on my call to action. The clicks is going to tell me how many people um, visited the link. And so there's um, pagination here. I can view different pages and all the different links that I've shared under this call to action. And so that's all I want to cover today. There's, uh, there's a lot more to Simply Analytics, actually a lot of segmentations you can do. Uh, you can group it by different brand profiles. You can group it by call to actions. Uh, if you're working with multiple clients, for example, you can segment those analytics just for a specific client profile so that you can generate reports um, for your clients. If you're working for a big brand that has many sub-brands, you can do the same thing with brand profiles and track the analytics separately. Uh, you can even also integrate third-party analytics. So if you want to plug the data straight into Google Analytics or Kissmetrics, you can do that, but I'll cover the advanced analytics integration stuff in a separate video. And that's it for today. Hope you learned uh, quite a lot about Snipply Analytics. Again, dive straight into your Snipply dashboard to learn more and really see for yourself the insights that you can get from Snipply. I'll be back with more videos soon, and I'll see you around.